So we have this equation, but how does this inform us what is going on? Well, we won't do any calculations, but we will show that this equation intuitively describes what is going on in a cell and across a membrane. Suppose we had a cell. where the semi-permeable membrane. It allows some things to pass through and the others don't. And so further suppose that we had glucose. And this glucose is impermeable to this membrane. It 100% reflects off and stays on this side of the cell. And further suppose we also have H2O on both sides. Now, since glucose is on this side and there's none on this side, we can see from our equation that G delta C, there's a huge difference in concentration on both sides. Across this membrane, there's a huge difference in concentration. And this causes a, an osmolarity uh, difference as well. And it, since this is our osmolarity, and we just times it by RT, we see that we get an osmotic pressure difference across this gradient. Now, because glucose cannot go through, cannot permeate through the membrane, we have water flowing through the other to the other side. So water, this, this osmotic pressure is pulling water through. Now, how would we measure this? If we had a column of water column of water and this column of water is a hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure and this hydrostatic pressure exerts a force across this area at the at the base of the column and this and this force is directed downwards now if the osmotic pressure is a force across this the membrane's area and it's pulling water this way and if the if water is pulling this way or if the hydrostatic pressure is down it's opposing the osmotic pressure force, or the force due to the osmotic pressure, and they're equal and opposite, then they cancel out. They cancel out. So therefore, the osmotic pressure is really just the hydrostatic pressure that stops the flow of water. So hopefully that explains uh, a little bit hydro about osmotic pressure and how it's measured, and it's really just a pressure that's uh, pulling water through or driving water through. Just to give you an idea, one milliosmolarity is about equal to or results in a 19 millimeter mercury pressure. This is a huge amount of pressure. And so a tiny difference in osmolarity will cause a huge amount of pressure and water will quickly move through the membrane. There's a large force and there's an action as a result of that. So to give you an idea of uh, normal osmolarity of body fluids, body fluid, is between 290 and 3 100 milliosmol. This is a, a good number to keep track of because it'll it's just a, something you use in the clinic. And if you're wondering uh, why glucose may come up in uh, clinical problems such as diarrhea.
So I gave you an example of a solute that has 100% reflection on this membrane. It does not permeate at all through the membrane. Now what if we had an opposite example? What if we had a solute that passes straight through the membrane? It freely, uh, freely permeates the membrane. So again, we have a cell with a cell mem semi-permeable membrane. And instead we have urea. Natural occurring substance in your body. And we also have, again, water on both sides. Now, because urea freely passes through the membrane, urea will just permeate across and reach equilibrium. So there's no osmotic pressure is created. If you want to think about it in, in this way, the G reaches zero because we have a, no difference in, in, event, in equilibrium. We have no difference in concentration across the membrane. So osmotic pressure equals zero in the case of urea, and no water is pulled through. If the membrane allows certain solutes to freely cross it, then these solutes are totally ineffective at exerting osmotic force across this membrane. And in other words, permeable solutes are ineffective ineffective osmolite. So if you look at glucose, this is an impermeable solute. 100% is reflected. So this is impermeable solutes are effective osmolites. Intuition tells us that there might be something in between. There might be something that's not quite 100% permeable and not quite 100% impermeable. So there's something in between. How do we account for that? in this equation. Well, if we look, we could use a, a coefficient in our uh, osmotic pressure equation and see that and, and account for this correction factor. It's a reflection coefficient. Glucose we saw, glucose has a uh, correction factor of one because a hundred percent reflected reflect off the membrane and urea has a co reflection coefficient of zero because a hundred percent crosses the membrane or it's freely it's freely permeable to the membrane so as you can see here here that uh, correction factors between 0 and 1 for 0% and 100% of reflection. So this is a effective, so placing this in front of our equation, we have the effective osmotic pressure. And to give you an example, we will look at physiological salt, sodium chloride. So sodium chloride, and if we have a concentration of 154 millimolar and our reflection coefficient equals 0 0.93 so not quite 100 percent then we see that the term the front term in our equation equals 0 0.93 times 2 times 154 equals 286 milli osmoles. This is remarkably close to what we expect for our normal osmolarity of our body fluids. This really illustrates that sodium chloride is a major component in our body fluid.